peering down into the water where the morning sun fashioned wheels of light, coronets fanwise in which lay trapped each twig, each grain of sediment, long flakes and blades of light in the dusty water, sliding away like optic strobes where motes sifted and spun. A hand trails over the gunwale and he lies athwart the skiff, the toe of one sneaker plucking periodic dimples in the river with the boat's slight cradling, drifting down beneath the bridge and slowly past the mud-stained stanchions, under the high cool arches and dark keeps of the span's undercarriage where pigeons babble and the hollow flap of their wings echoes in stark applause. Glancing up at these cathedral vaultings with their fossil wood knots and pseudomorphic nail heads and gray concrete, drifting, the bridge's slant shadow leaning the width of the river with that headlong illusion, postulate in old capracers frozen on photo plates, their wheels elliptic with speed. These shadows form over the skiff, accommodate his prone figure and pass on. Below the bridge, he eased himself erect, took up the oars, and began to row toward the south bank. There he brought the skiff about, swinging the stern into a clump of willows. And going aft, he raised up a heavy cord that ran into the water from an iron pipe driven into the mud of the bank. This he relayed through an open oarlock mounted on the skiff's transom. Now he set out again, rowing slowly, the cord coming up wet and smooth through the lock and dipping into the river again. When he was some 30 feet from shore, the first dropper came up, doubling the line until he reached and cast it off. He went on, the skiff slightly quartered against the river's drift the hooks riding up one by one into the oarlock with their leached and tattered gobbets of flesh. When he felt the weight of the first fish, he shipped the dripping oars and took hold of the line and brought it in by hand. A large carp broke water, a coarse mailed flank, dull bronze and glinting. He braced himself with one knee and hefted it into the boat and cut the line and tied the fish fresh hook with a chunk of cut bait and dropped it over the side and went on, sculling one oar, the carp warping heavily against the floorboards. When he had finished running the line, he was on the other side of the river. He rebaited the last drop and let the heavy cord go, watching it sink in the muddy water among a spangled nimbus of sun motes, a broken corona up through which flared for a moment the last pale chunk of rancid meat. Shifting the oars ab aboard, he sprawled himself over the seats again to take in the sun. The skiff swung gently, drifting in the current. He undid his shirt to the waist and put one forearm to his eyes. He could hear the river talking softly beneath him. Heavy old river with wrinkled face.